today I'd like to talk to you on the subject, putting your dream to the test. Ten questions that will help you see it and seize it. Now, this teaching on putting your dream to the test is, is from a book that I've just written with the same title, Putting Your Dream to the Test. Um, this is my third attempt at writing a dream book. The, the first two times I tried to write a book on realizing your dreams and achieving your dreams, I, I felt that I, I just, I failed. I didn't, it wasn't what I wanted, so I put it away, and I said, well, a little later, I'll try to do it again. And the reason that I, I was so um, uncomfortable is that the first two attempts I had on this uh, dream book were too huffy and puffy. There was no, the substance was not there, and it was a little too whimsical, and it was a little too mystical, and it was way too subjective, and I just, I just didn't feel comfortable at all. So in the process, I, I, I would lay it aside, and so this is my third attempt. In fact, when I picked it up this third time, uh, about a year and a half ago, I said, if I can't pull it off this time, I think it's just a book that I can't write because I don't have the giftedness to write it. And so I, I began to think again, how can I do this that will really help people achieve their dreams? And all of a sudden, I realized that there were questions we should ask ourselves to make sure that our dream is legitimate. And I began a list of questions. In fact, uh, we're going to discuss 10 because that's how many are, that are in the book. But when I started, I had 33 questions. I always start kind of big, and then I start bringing it back down. And it took me about three months to reduce these questions to 10. But when I got them down to 10, with great integrity, I can look you in the eye, whether you read the book or whether you listen to this teaching, and say, these questions, if you can answer them in a positive way, yes, will help you to achieve your dream. Um, how many of you uh, had a teacher, like I had several teachers when I was growing up, uh, how many of you had teachers that before the test would be maybe given on Friday, maybe the session before that, they would tell you some of the things that were going to be on the test or things that you should study for so that you'd be prepared? H how many of you had teachers like that? Okay, okay, we all have, we all have. A and you know what they were doing? They were trying to prepare you to be successful. They were setting you up for success when you took the test. That's what these 10 questions do. They set you up for success. In fact, in your notes, if you'll look at the paragraph, and by the way, there are things that I'll read that are in your notes. There are things I won't read. We'll skip things that are in your notes. This is just for you to have a lot of material, but I won't touch all the material. Trust me. Well, let me, let me start with this paragraph. My desire is to be like one of those encouraging teachers to you. I want to prepare you to put your dream to the test so that you can actually achieve it. How? I believe that if you know the right questions to ask yourself, and if you can answer these questions in an affirmative way, you'll have an excellent chance of being able to achieve your dreams. The more questions you can answer positively, the greater the likelihood of success. And that is the reason I wrote this book. Here's my definition of a dream that can be put to the test and passed. A dream is an inspiring picture of the future that energizes your mind, will, and emotions empowering you to do everything you can to achieve it. A genuine dream is a picture and a blueprint of a person's purpose and potential. And those two are inseparable. What your potential is is what your purpose is. And what your purpose is shows you what your potential can be. Four common reasons why people have trouble identifying their dream. First of all, some people have been discouraged from dreaming by others. In other words, other people just discourage them. How many of you have ever been discouraged by others with your dream? You understand this, don't you? In my book, Failing Forward, I tell the experiment that researchers did with four monkeys, of which they brought these four monkeys in a closed room, and, and then they had a tree for them to climb. The top of the tree was a great, wonderful bunch of bananas. And automatically, when the monkeys came to the room, the first monkey started to go up to the tree. And when the, when the monkey got right up to where the bananas were, they doused the monkey with just a torrent of cold water. Uh, you know, and the monkey scampered back down the tree. And after a while, the second monkey tried it again. When the second, second monkey just got to where the bananas were, they doused them with cold water down the monkey cam. Now you can see what's going to happen. Every monkey tried. Every monkey was doused. Every monkey came back down. 
And then they took one of the monkeys that had the bad experience and took them out of the room and put a new monkey that had never seen nor experienced that cold, drenching water. And automatically, the new monkey started to climb the tree, but the other three who had the bad experience, they pulled it down. They wouldn't, they wouldn't let it. There's no need for water now. They're beginning to pull that one down. And slowly the researchers took one monkey each out of the room until there are four monkeys in the room who have never been doused with cold water, have never seen this bad experience. And they keep pulling each other down so they don't reach the bananas. They don't know why. But they pull each other down. And every one of us have been pulled down by people who they haven't always experienced something bad in that area, but they've heard somebody experience something bad in that area. And so they pull us down. The second reason is some people are hindered by past disappointments and hurts. So, some people never reach their dream because they, they've, just, they've been hurt. And disappointment is the gap between expectation and reality. Our expectation is way up here, and, and reality many times is right down here. And that gap between uh, what we expected to happen and what is happening is what we call disappointments. And again, all of us, have we not been disappointed in what we thought we could achieve and what we did achieve and what we thought would perhaps be ours and what is ours? There's a tremendous gap many times. Number three, some people get in the habit of settling for average. Columnist Marine Dowd says, the minute you settle for less than you deserve, you get even less than you settled for. One of my favorite statements on settling for average, I've had this quote for, oh my, my goodness, 30 years I filed it. 30 years ago I filed this quote. Kenneth Hildebrand said, the poorest of all men is not the one without a nickel to his name. He's the fellow without a dream. He's like a great ship made for the mighty ocean, but trying to navigate in a mill pond. He has no far port to reach, no lifting horizon, no precious cargo to carry. His hours ab are absorbed in routine and petty tyrannies. Small wonder if he gets dissatisfied, quarrelsome, and fed up. One of life's greatest tragedies is a person with a 10 by 12 capacity and a 2 by 4 soul. Number four. Some people lack the confidence needed to pursue their dreams. Sometimes it's a confidence factor. Irma Bombach, who was always cracking me up, she was alive, said, it takes a lot of courage to show your dreams to someone else. I know that to be very true. I know that to be true in my life. It takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable enough to say, here's what I hope for, here's what I dream for, and lay it out. I just did a recent survey in Washington, D.C. Every year I do an event um, for high-level executives. We usually limit it to about 80. We did it in Washington, D.C. this year where they come, and from Wednesday noon to Friday noon, they spend a couple of days with me. And I give them a lot of leadership experiences, and I do a lot of teaching on leadership. And one of the things that I did is I, gave, I asked them to, to fill out this survey. Now, what I want you to understand about the people that I asked to fill out this survey that I'm about to share with you the results, these are highly highly, highly successful people, many of them CEOs of their companies. They pay $8,000 for two days with me to do leadership. And so I had a survey of which I asked them to, to fill out some questions about dreams. And it was an extensive survey. I'm going to just give you four. You don't need to write them down, but I do want to kind of use this as the setting, the, the foundation for everything we're going to do in this teaching today. I asked them, Question number one, do you have a dream for your life? 100% said yes. You would expect that out of high-level executives, wouldn't you? Number two, I said, are you at times frustrated in pursuit of your dream? 95% said yes. I'm talking about top-shelf leaders. Question number three, have you ever given up on an important dream? 50% said yes. Half the people great potential, terrific talent, amazing ability. Half the people say, yeah, I have given up on an important dream. The, the last question was, have you accomplished your dream? And 95% said, no, I haven't accomplished my dream yet. Now, that's why I wrote this book. 
Because if the best of the best, many of them have never achieved their dream or accomplished it yet, then, then don't you think all of us need to put our dream to the test and ask ourselves the important questions that will allow us to be the success that we really think that God has created us to be. So, are you ready for the dream test? Yes. Okay, here we go. Ten questions right there in front of you. Let's, let's, I'm going to give you the ten questions and I'm going to teach on them. Number one is the ownership question. The ownership question asks, is my dream really my dream? Number two is the clarity question. Do I clearly see my dream? Number three, the reality question. Am I depending on factors within my control to achieve my dream? Number four is the passion question. Does my dream compel me to follow it? Number five, the pathway question. Do I have a strategy to reach my dream? Number six, the people question. Have I included the people I need to realize my dream? Number seven, the cost question. Am I willing to pay the price for my dream? Number eight, the tenacity question. Am I moving closer to my dream? Number nine, the fulfillment question. Does working toward my dream bring satisfaction? And finally, number 10, the significance question. Does my dream benefit others? Take a moment and just look at those questions. Because those are the 10 questions that you have to ask yourself. This is putting your dream to the test. You have to look at your dream and lay these 10 questions over it. And here's how simple this is. The more of these questions you can answer with a very affirmative, strong, confident yes, the greater your odds are of achieving the dream. Now here's what you're going to discover. You're going to discover of the 10 questions, there are some that you can answer yes better than others. Is that not true? Think of it as 100% to 0%. There might be one or two that you could even say 100%, I'm there. And some it might be 70%. Some it may be 45%. There may be, hey, there may be two or three that are 5%. I mean, you're just not even hardly in the game yet. Are you with me? Here's what I know. When people don't reach their dream, the reason they don't reach it is they don't have enough valid reasons to reach it. You've got to have a lot of valid reasons to reach your dream. You see, if you and I only have one reason to reach our dream, that's why when people say, well, you know what, I have this dream and, and I'm going to make a lot of money. And that's their dream. I would just go, boy, I'm going to make a lot of money. I just, I got hard away. I'm going to, I'm going to make a lot of money. Can I tell you something? If you only have one reason for achieving a dream, that one reason will get knocked out of you very quickly. What keeps people in the game, in the dream game, is that they have more than one reason. In fact, these 10 questions, hang on, are 10 reasons to pursue your dream. And so therefore, you need to look at your dream as it is today and put these 10 questions underneath it as your foundation. And those that you're strong in, you know, high five yourself, those that are your weekend, these are the areas you're going to have to work on. Does that make sense? You're ready to go.